Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video we are going to be painting Bilbo Baggins. We're going to be painting the old version of Bilbo Baggins and this is a metal miniature from the Games Workshop uh, miniature range for the Middle Earth strategy battle game. That is a mouthful. Uh, this is a model that I picked up recently on the made to order from the Games Workshop web store and he is going to make a fantastic, fantastic addition to my shelving and of course our Middle Earth strategy battle game set as well. Without further ado, we're going to get stuck straight into the model and we're going to start, as always, by painting the skin. We're going to use our tried and tested uh, Vallejo skin paint range. So uh, this is going to be nice and quick and easy. We know what we're doing. We've done this a million times before. So we're going to start with the beige red. And we're just going to use a nice thin coat, as you can see here. And we're just going to paint this across the face, the hands, and of course, being a hobbit, don't forget the feet as well. So we're just going to try to make sure that this is a nice thin uh, layer so that we can make sure that we can keep as much detail as possible. You don't want to put uh, the paint onto your model in a thick, thick sort of blob because we don't want to lose any of the details. Not forgetting, being a hobbit, uh, this Bilbo is a particularly small miniature. Some parts of the miniature are going to be a little bit difficult to show you on camera, but I will do my best. And we're just going to paint, as I said, all of the hands as well as the, the face and things like that. doesn't matter at this stage if you uh, make any mistakes. That's the beauty of just doing these base tones to begin with. So once that's dry, we're just going to use a small amount of flesh wash from the Army Painter. Alternatively, uh, you could use a Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel, and that will do exactly the same job. They both have a really nice sort of warm tone to them when you place them onto the miniature, and they sit and pool in just all of those little recess points, especially between the fingers and around the eyes and things like that. These are brilliant little shades to bring that skin color to life. So we're just going to cover all of the skin, the, the, again, the face, the hands, and of course, uh, the little hobbit feet. It is easy to paint the top part, so do the face and the hands, and forget that he, ha uh, that he actually has his feet poking out. So try not to forget his feet. From there, then we're going to use a heavy red, and we're going to use heavy red now on his waistcoat. So this is going to be the inner part of the model. It's always easier to paint inwards to outwards, I find, because if you tend to paint outwards to inwards, it's easy then to make mistakes and get paint on other areas of the model. If you paint the harder to reach areas first, and then work your way out to the easier points on the outside, this means when you use a wash or a shade, this will tie your colors together, but then it allows you also to build those colors up without making uh, as many mistakes or by giving yourself the option of not making so many mistakes so it's an easier way of painting and an easier way of building that tone through once that's done we're going to use a dark blue gray and the dark blue gray we're just going to use around the area of his sort of um i don't know if it's like a sort of a waistcoat or a um, dressing gown or anything like that but we're going to paint this with a dark blue gray and we're going to paint these two parts to the front and there's also bands just going around his cuffs as well as you can see just around the hand here holding the book i'm also going to paint the gray on the inside of this jacket um just on the inside of this coat here as well and again this is going to tie those colors together and make everything sit nice and evenly again just making sure that we're using a nice thin layer so a little bit of water with your paint goes a long long way because if you have a little bit of water in the paint it allows that paint to be manipulated and moved onto the miniature in a nice even fashion and it also sits into areas uh, sort of in between cracks and grooves as well uh, whereas normally you dry brush to get things on the top end from there we're going to use a black red and we're going to paint the black red just across the jacket on the outside now we're doing two different reds with this uh this sort of paint scheme so we're doing a brighter red on the inside for the waistcoat and then a darker red on the outside for the jacket Now the dark dark red that we're going to use is going to create a bit more of a regal sort of um tone almost kind of making it look a little bit of a different texture and that's kind of what we want we don't want the two reds to combine or clash we want these two reds to be quite different and quite um, unique so that it stands apart from the rest of the model. So I'm just going to be careful to paint this just across uh, the jacket as much as I can. Again, like I say, making sure that the paint is nice and thin. This paint is uh, quite thin anyway, so this one's going to take me two coats to get this to the nice uh, consistency that I think is, um, is perfect for this particular model. Just trying to be careful not to get this on the grey. 
And then once that's done, we're going to use a dark green grey from AK Interactive. And this is just going to be to do the small scarf area here just under his chin. So as you can see, we're just going to be very, very careful just to place a little bit of this just underneath that's, uh, the, the, the chin, just underneath the skin that we've already painted. Now if you don't have this colour with the AK Interactive, you could use a Vallejo Dark Green. Uh, that would also give you a really, really nice colour tone as well. And we're going to move on to use one of my favourite colours on the channel, which is the Dark Rust 302. And again, if you don't have this one, if you want an alternative to this paint, you can always use a Rhinox Hide. Or, alternatively, you could also use a Dryad Bark, both of which are from Citadel's Paints. And we're just going to paint his little shorts here. I don't know if they're shorts or if they're trousers or if they're just... I don't know. Because he's so small anyway, I don't know if they're just shorts. But with his, uh, if they're trousers with his feet poking out or if they're sort of uh, shorts. Either way, we're going to paint this all using that nice dark brown. From there then we're going to use a small part of Flayed One Flesh. And this is just going to be to go in between the cracks of the book. So this is how we're painting our pages. This is going to be nice and quick and easy. And it's going to look fantastic when it's done as well. So we're just going to use the very, very tip of our brush. And we're going to paint this Flayed One Flesh just in between the two areas of the book. Where his hand is holding the book. And this is going to cover all of those white pages. This is going to be a great, great way of painting these. Once that's done then we're going to use a red leather and with the red leather we're going to paint this on the top part and the bottom part of the book. So this is going to be for the, uh, the leather outside of the book as you can see here. Just going to try to be as careful as possible not to get this on any of the parts and as you can see I've spilt that just a little bit onto the cream that we were using for the pages. And that's all I've done is just using a damp brush as you can see. I'm just dragging the paint across so that the paint then doesn't sit onto that. Uh, cream area onto that flayed one flesh. See it doesn't matter too much if you make mistakes if your paint is thin you can always uh, fix it so don't worry too much. Then we're going to use a stonewall grey and we're just going to use this to cover all of the hair. The stonewall grey is a great great sort of uh, mid-tone grey. Alternatively you could use a dawnstone from uh, Citadel that would equally work just as nice um, and that would be a great alternative as well. The reason why I have mentioned many alternatives uh, sort of for the skin is because I do have a really great video on how I paint skin up on the channel that has gone uh, quite well. Uh, it's had a very, very good reception and I paint with a couple of different brands on there as well. So that gives you a few different options. From there, I'm going to use Citadel's Null Nile. You could also, if you wanted to, use a dark tone from uh, the Army Painter if you're using all Army Painter shades and washes. Uh, these are pretty much just black washes. And that's all we're going to do with this is apply this wash across all of the model apart from the skin. So this is going to tie all of those reds together. It's going to tie the grey together as well. And as you can see, what's going to happen with the grey is this black is going to sit in between all of those little uh, patterned parts of the jacket, just giving us that little a bit of extra depth and tone there you go just like so we're also going to apply this across the book and as you can see there you go you can see just where that's picking out all of those details on those pages without us having to do too much see it's such a, a small small thing such a simple thing but the reward is so great sometimes painting doesn't have to be complicated as long as it's fun as long as we're enjoying painting and we're painting our models in our own way it doesn't matter so yeah, as I say, we're going to cover all of the model apart from the skin, so I'm also going to paint over the hair in this way as well. Just going to be very, very careful not to allow this to run onto the face though, and onto the skin. And of course across his little trousers as well. So Null Nile is a great shade and a great wash. It's also quite thin, so this gives us the opportunity to manipulate this in a nice way around the model as well. Now once that shade is dry, we're going to move on to then start in a rebuild all of those colours. So we're going to start with the skin, as we always do, and we're going to go back to our base, uh, our base colour with our beige red. And we're going to start to pick out all of those details now. Again, if you've seen me painting skin before, uh, you should be an expert at this by now. And pretty much that's all we're going to do is use the very, very tip of the brush. And we're using a nice size zero brush for this as well. And using that very tip of the brush, you can see just how much control I'm trying to use as to where I place the paint now. So we're trying to allow some of that darker, darker tone underneath just to sit in all of those little creases, all of those little cracks around the face, um, just to create that character as well. And that's giving us a real nice contrast in the face, as you can see, and it's really bringing that character to life as well. 
So again, as you can see, just trying to be as careful as possible. It's always good to be careful when painting skin, um, and it's always good to take your time. As I normally say with skin, it's one of those things where it can be quite complicated to paint and it can be quite daunting, but it's also massively rewarding as well, because once you paint it and you get it looking right, uh, it's always a really, really nice focal point of your model. You look at the face, you notice the face, you notice the character. Uh, so spending a bit of time making sure that the face and the skin look good uh, will always go a long, long way in terms of how well your miniatures are painted so like I said just trying to be as careful as possible with the skin now once that's done we're going to use the beige red and a basic skin tone and I'm just going to use half and half so this is 50% of each or one blob of each a nice little bit of water in there as well just to make it move on to the miniature in a nice even smooth way and as you can see, I'm just going to pick out now some of the areas where uh, the highlights would be. So again, across the forehead, just across the cheekbones, across the nose area and things like that. Just going to be as careful as we can to pick these out without going too extreme. want to try to avoid getting any of the highlights now in the darker areas and in the recessed areas. Just trying to make sure that we're picking bits out. Now, don't forget when you're painting as well, a lot of the uh, paints when you're applying these to the miniatures, they will look brighter when you place them onto the model, and then they do uh, sort of dry down and tone down in a nice, even fashion. Especially if you've thinned your paints with a little bit of water, they will dry together in a nice, smooth fashion, and they will give you a really, really nice transition into the model, like so. So, as we paint in this, you can kind of see it looks a little bit bright. But then as the other colors come up and as these uh, sort of paints dry together and they kind of merge together, you're going to get this really, really nice, smooth kind of skin effect. From there then, I'm going to use a uh, dark blue-gray and a blue-gray pale. Again, I'm using half of each. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a very, very, very small light dry brush. So if you follow me, you know I don't do dry brushing as often because I like to try to pick out as many details as possible. Uh, but with some miniatures like Hobbits, when they are this small, sometimes a little bit of dry brushing just makes things that little bit easier um, and it also looks great as well. And that's all I'm doing is just using a very small dry brush to drag this across that dark area of the, uh, the coat, as you can see. Now, once that's done, I'm then also gonna be very very specific about just placing the uh, blue gray pail on there as well just to again pick out some of those very very small highlights uh, just across the top area of those uh, sort of little bumps and things on there once that's done we're also then going to move on to sky gray this is a nice light gray and i'm also then just going to dry brush this as you can see just across the hair here and just pick up that highlight across the hair. Now as we start to dry brush this hair and start to get this nice light grain, nice light silver sort of tone out of it, you'll start to see then that the face and the hair kind of um, create the character together. So whereas the hair was quite dark and the face was quite light, now that the hair is starting to light up a bit, we're starting to get that real nice sort of character. Once that's done, I'm going to use a very, very, very small amount of dark green, and I'm just going to pick out that little scarf area just around the neck here. There's a few different greens you could use for this. Um, like I said, I'm using this as a dark green. You could alternatively use sick green uh, from uh, Vallejo, uh, so there's a lot of different choices there as well. We're going to go back to using the heavy red now just on the waistcoat on the inside and as I said don't forget we're going to paint now from the inside out so that uh, any mistakes are easily covered over and easily fixed. So we've done the scarf, we're now just going to do his little waistcoat. So we're going to paint this while keeping all of the, um, the darker bits so where the shade is sat in all of those little recesses. We're going to leave that there and we're going to pick out the highlight in points just across the front of the waistcoat and just across that band of the waistcoat just going down uh, across his chest as well. Once that's done, we're going to use a mixture of heavy red and carmine red. Again, we're going to use half and half, so that's just 50-50 each. Uh, for this, I'm just going to use a small dab in stippling motion, and I'm just going to start to get a little bit of a, a highlight just across the front, and as I say, just across that fold as well, across his chest, as you can see. And this is starting to boost that vibrancy of his little waistcoat on the inside, just like so. Once that's done, I'm then going to use Carmine Red on its own, and I'm going to do the same thing. Just going to be very, very specific about where I place this. I'm going to use just a very small stippling effect just across some of the areas where I want this color to be boosted and highlighted, just down the front, just like so. 
there you go. And that's going to give us a really nice smooth transition from the darker tone underneath through to this nice light vibrant sort of highlight just across the very front of the waistcoat as well. It's a nice smooth transition so that's going to give us something that's quite pleasing on the eye to look at as well. Something nice and quick and simple. Now if you wanted to, this is purely an optional area, you can also use inks. I'll talk about inks in another video in a completely different time, uh, but for this as an optional optional point, um, I'm just using a very small bit of the Vallejo ink. And inks will boost vibrancy really, 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 really quickly, but they're also very, very thin as well, so you don't need too much of an ink. Um, so you can use this in a nice smooth way to build vibrancy without needing too many layers and overdoing things as well. So I'm just using this ink just to get that vibrancy right up there. But like I said, I'll make a video on that another time. From there, then we're going back to that black red and we're just going to start to pick out all of the colours and all of the details on his jacket, doing exactly the same thing as we normally do. We're just painting over the areas um, sort of where the detail is and we're painting over all of the folds, leaving the darker patches just in uh, between all of those creases where the, uh, the shade has sort of dried down in between all of those folds as well. You could start to see this difference in this, this sort of regal dark red color now. So whereas we have this really nice bright red on the waistcoat, you can see how much this dark red is a completely different tone to that inner red, giving us that really cool sort of contrast and transition in the model as well. It's just going to be as careful as possible to use that tip of the brush, like I say, and just trying to pick out as much as we can, just going as nice and even, as neatly as we can across uh, the model here. Again, a nice little bit of water with your paint, making the paint move and flow smoothly onto the miniature. It goes a long, long way. Uh, it makes painting much, much faster, much, much easier. And it allows the paint to dry into that smooth transition that I mentioned earlier as well. Just picking out the pockets and things and leaving the darker areas, going around the pockets so that it kind of highlights and gives us that contrast. Once that's done, we're going to use black red and burnt red. And again, we're going to use half and half. So this is just one blob of each and doing the exact same thing as what we've just done, but maybe a little bit more specific this time. We're now going to start to pick out all of those folds and creases again. And you can see that dark red underneath that sort of black red tone underneath is allowing this burnt red, black red combination to really smoothly blend into that tone as well. It's giving out this really, really nice nice um, sort of regal sort of red color it's a really really lovely tone that we build in here again we're just picking out with the tip of the brush all of those details don't forget like I say these are particularly small models so you don't have to be extremely extremely accurate don't worry if you make a little mistake or anything like that um, and yeah just have some fun paint them in your your own way because they're your models um, you can paint them sort of however however you feel best but there we go, just picking out all of the pockets. And yes, there we go. You can see just across the, the creases across the front of the jacket. Now you can see that difference now between the dark red and the light red is really starting to make the model pop, really sort of making him stand out and look really, really different. It's a lovely, lovely tone, this red. Here we go, just across the arms as well, just picking out those creases and all of those creased areas just like so. Once that's done then we can use burnt red on its own and again we can be very very specific about how we do this so we can now just pick out on pretty much just the creases so we, we're not painting as much of the model as you can see we're now just picking out areas that we want that light vibrancy and that red colour that sort of red tone just to show through there we go you can see now how much more specific I'm being where I'm placing this. And this, again, with that little bit of water, it's that's nice that this giving you that nice smooth transition and that color is just blending in in a really, really lovely, subtle fashion. Again, just painting across the pockets in the same way and of course down the arms as well. Here we go, it's really, really standing out now. It's really starting to make that jacket look completely different to his waistcoat and really give us that contrast, that crushed dark red versus that nice vibrant, lovely tone underneath. And that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. We want to capture the character in this way and we want to paint him uh, in a way that makes him really stand out on our shelves when he's put into our display cabinet, which you guys would have seen my display cabinet in my recent Q&A video. So if you want to uh, take a look at some of the models that I've got on display and, and sort of uh, have a look at some of the questions that a few of the people have been asking me on the channel, uh, just check out the Q&A. There's loads and loads of information there. It's a great, great little video. 
From there, I'm moving on to my favorite color again, Dark Rust 302. And I'm going to do the same thing. We're just going to paint all of those creases, going to follow the creases of the trousers. I have said a few times on the channel that it is like painting by numbers when we get to this stage. And pretty much what I mean by that is the shade has done most of the work for us. It's dried down into those recess points, giving us a lot of uh, sort of creases and giving us the shape of the creases so that's all we've got to do here now is paint across the upper area so that the higher points of the creases which will then increase our highlight so it's, it's very very simple very very simple and then we're using that dark rust and leather brown we're going to use half and half again so 50 50 of each a nice little bit of water just so that this thing gives us a nice smooth transition onto the model and again now we're just going to pick out all of those creases as you can see using the very tip of the brush and gently slowly building that highlight on the trousers and you can really see it having an effect on the brown you can see the difference between that darker tone to the lighter tone as we build in that tone up and as i said that painting by numbers that whole idea that we're just painting on the raised edges rather than the whole part makes this very simple and very easy to achieve it's not something that we need to to, to worry about or stress about or think that we can't achieve these level of details because we can it's, it's quite quick and quite easy as you can see once that's done I'm going to be very very specific with this so I'm going to use the leather brown on its own but this time I'm going to add a lot more water so I'm going to create a glaze out of this and I'll do a video again on all these different techniques uh, another time I'll show you sort of how to make glazes and how to water down your paints and things if that is something that you would like to know and if that is information that you think would be useful then I, I'll get on that and I'll make a video for you guys as well but this time that's all I'm doing now is using the most extreme tip of the brush and I'm using the very 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 edge as you can see and I'm just picking out some of those very very fine details then we're going to move back onto the red leather and we're going to use the red leather now just to boost that color on the book again so we're just going to boost the color just up and around the book as I said earlier some of the areas are a little bit difficult for me to get to on camera but I'm going to try my best to to paint this through and show you so yeah just painting around there is a little star symbol just across the top and we'll get to that in a little bit so don't paint that paint around that star and pick out those details and the character on the book and the little bindings as well from there i'm going to use dead white and this is now going to be for the star on the book and also for a small part of the collar just here Bilbo has this very very small collar here so I'm going to paint this using a nice bright dead white to make it look like he has a very nice bright shirt and underneath his waistcoat um, as I said there's a star on the book and I will show you kind of how I'm painting it it's very 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 awkward to do on camera so I apologize for this bit at the moment but as you can see here I'm just using the very tip of the brush and just trying to pick out that star shape just on the book there it's very difficult to do it's very small and it's hard to see as well moving on then I'm just going to use a small bit of brown sand and this brown sand color I'm just going to use just to pick out each of the buttons so I'm not going to paint the buttons gold um, I'm going to keep gold uh, just as a color just for the one ring and instead we're going to pick these out using a sort of uh, brown sand so like a yellowy brown color so like a goldy brown color so this will allow us to add a nice cool sort of goldy color but without it taking away from the golden shine and glow from the one ring because that's the one thing we don't want to do talking about the one ring we are now going to use retributor armor another one of my favorite colors and being very very careful and very very specific we're just going to pick out that one ring in his hand here this is a very fiddly part of the model and a very difficult bit to paint so just take your time take your time and gently place bits of the gold just there and as you can see as you slowly build that up you can see that vibrancy you can see that metallic glow that gold color starting to shine through and all in all that is our old bilbo done so we've got some really cool little techniques in there some really cool easy to follow sort of techniques in there as well we haven't broken uh, the mold we haven't gone crazy we haven't done something that is so difficult that we can't do we've tried to keep it nice and simple and those colors and textures and tones especially things like the brown through the trousers the dark red on his jacket in comparison to the light red that he's got for his waistcoat they look really 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 cool he really stands out and he looks like a great great miniature like I said before, don't 
underestimate how small these are because these little hobbits are very small models um, but he will make a fine addition to my painting cabinet i really hope that this video um that i really hope that you've enjoyed this video guys thank you so much for watching till the end thank you for all of the support and everything that you've been giving me uh thank you for uh, just the positivity and the input and and the ideas that you're throwing at the channel you guys are fantastic you've you've given me so many different things to try and so many different things to work on so i really really do appreciate all of your time and all of your input um yeah so i hope you enjoyed this video take care my friends and i will see you all on the next one